In this video, we'll go over the most common technical tasks that you can get during interviews for the DevOps role. First of all, create a simple HTTP server in Python. Then run your server locally. Create a Docker file for the app. Next, run your server locally using Docker. Expose the app to the outside world. Update the code to wait 30 seconds before it starts. Add a Kubernetes health check to serve traffic only when the app is ready. And finally, update the app to return a message from the config map. That's all, let's get started. First of all, let's create a new my app folder and main.py python file. Import HTTP server. Next, create a handler class based on base HTTP request handler. For this task, we only need to define a get method. Set the response status code to 200. Optionally, you can set content type header to plain text since we will return a string. Don't forget to set encoding type to UTF-8. Next, define another run function to initialize the server. Wrap the server in try-catch block. Finally, pass the host and the port to the run function. Almost always your project will contain external packages. In that case, you need to create a virtual environment to keep app packages isolated from your environment. For this task, it's optional. After you create a virtual environment, you need to activate it. If you have dependencies, you need to install them with pip install requirements.txt command. For this simple server, you can just execute python3 main.py. To confirm that our server works, let's run curl from the other window. We got hello world and content type header back. The next task is to containerize our application. I'll show you multiple approaches with different base images. The goal is to create a small image as possible that includes fewer packages. The most basic approach that you can take is to use a standard Python image from the Docker Hub. There is nothing wrong with it except it's huge and typically used in the build stage of multi-stage Docker file. But in this case, we don't have any dependencies. Copy main.py file to the image and define entry point for the image to start the server. Now let's deactivate the Python virtual environment and build the image. If you list Docker images, you'll see that the image size is around 875 megabytes, which is way too big. We can do a little bit better with default images. This time, let's use another Python image, slim version, based on Debian Buster image. The slim image is pared down version of the full image. This image generally only installs the minimum packages needed to run your particular tool. Now, let's build the second image. The size is almost 9 times smaller than the previous image, which will result in faster startup time. It's important, especially if you want to autoscale your application. For production, we typically use Scratch, Alpine or Google's distroless images. For Python, let's use distroless image based on Debian 11. Optionally, you can add dash "-u flag to see print statements in the container log. Let's build this image. The size is half of the slim buster image. Just in case you have any dependencies and requirements.txt file, I'll create another docker file for you just as a reference. It's going to be a multi-stage docker file. In the first stage, we'll install tools to build our Python project. In the second one, we'll install all dependencies for the project. And finally, copy the project to the new distroless image. To run it locally using docker, you need to make sure that that your server listens on all network interfaces and map port 8080 to localhost. Let's verify again that it works. Now, since I'm on Mac and use Apple Silicon for Kubernetes, I need to build another image and supply platform argument with Linux slash AMD64. To deploy the app to Kubernetes, we need to push this image to the remote repository, unless, of course, you use Minikube or something similar. Let's upload this image to the Docker Hub. Before, you need to create account there. Then log in using a username and a password or a temporary token. And upload the image by using the docker push command. 
The best practice is to use namespaces to separate your workloads. Let's create a dev namespace for this server. Then create a deployment object and use image that you just uploaded. Also, don't forget to define resource block. Optionally, you can use pod anti-affinity to spread those pods between different nodes for high availability. All right, we're ready to deploy. Let's apply it. All pods are up. The next task is to expose our app to the outside world. The easiest way, of course, is to use port forward command, but it's only for local testing and not to expose the app to the clients. The second approach is to use a node port. You can select a specific port on the nodes and route traffic in that way. Make sure you use the same labels that you have on deployment object to select pods. You can see that our server's 8080 port is mapped to the 30001 node port. We can use any node in our cluster to access the server. It's not the best option since nodes can come and go and every time you add or remove a node, you need to update DNS. But if you're on premise, you may not have any other choice. You can route traffic even using control plane nodes. And don't forget to open the firewall for that port. The next approach is much more common is to use a service of type load balancer. But you need to make sure that the cloud where you deploy your Kubernetes supports it. I use Metal LB project to implement load balancer functionality on premise environments, including this one. The downside of the load balancer approach is that you need to create a load balancer for each app you want to expose. But on the other hand, it can route arbitrary TCP and UDP traffic, not only HTTP compared to most ingresses. The most common approach to expose web services is to use ingress. First, we need to create a cluster IP service. To use ingress, you must deploy ingress controller before you create that object. Otherwise, it's going to be ignored. Here's an example of Terraform and Helm to deploy Nginx ingress controller to Kubernetes cluster. I'll set the ingress class to external Nginx. You can verify that you have ingress class by running get ingress class in the terminal. Now, let's create ingress object. In older versions of ingress, we used annotation to select the class. Now we use ingress class name property. Default Nginx ingress deployment does not support that annotation. If you want to use it, you need to explicitly enable it while deploying the ingress controller. If you get ingress and don't see the address, you can try load balancer IP of the ingress controller, which should be exactly the same address. To test ingress, you don't have to create DNS record. You can just use curl host header and provide destination address. The next task is to wait 30 seconds before starting the server. We can do it with the sleep function, which accepts seconds as an argument. Before the run function, add sleep for 30 seconds. Rebuild the image and push it to the Docker Hub. Don't forget to update the image tag. The next task is to implement a health check. Typically, we would have a dedicated endpoint for the health check. Since our app starts in 30 seconds, we can either use initial delay seconds on readiness and liveness prop. But a better approach is to use a startup prop that instead of simply waiting 30 seconds, it will check every 10 seconds, which can potentially reduce the startup time. We also have a readiness prop here. If it fails two times, container will be marked as not ready and does not receive any any traffic. On the other hand, when the liveness prop fails two times, a pod will be restarted. Let's go ahead and apply deployment. The final task is to read a message from the config map and return it to the client. Typically, we use config map to configure our application. Let's create config map with hello world from config map message. 
In the deployment, we need to create a volume from the config map and mount that volume inside the pod to etc message.txt. Subpath is a config property that we want to mount. Also, we need to modify the app. If it would be a config, we read that file when the server starts and load it to dictionary. In this case, we can just read the file whenever we get a request. Optionally, you can check if the file exists. Let's rebuild the image and upload it for the last time to the Docker Hub. Update the image tag. And apply deployment. Now, when you try access the app using Ingress, you should get a message from the config map. If you want me to go over some other DevOps interview tasks, please send me them here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.